Ready to begin? Yeah? Okay, my name is Kelly. I'm a family nurse practitioner. And I am here to talk to you tonight about the epidemic that has become vaping in teenagers specifically. Raise your hand if you know or are a teen that um, has vaped. If you know of a teen that's vaped. Okay, so a few of you. All right, I expected a few more. <laughs> well, hopefully this topic is relevant to all of you. Okay, so what is vaping? So vaping is um, basically the act of inhaling a vapor that's created by heating a liquid on a handheld electronic device, okay? Um, dripping is another form of vaping, so you may hear dripping and vaping used simultaneously, but essentially dripping is where the user drips the liquid themselves onto the heated element and it creates a vapor. And I guess that provides a more concentrated vapor, but anyways, those are a couple of terms for it. Um, I've also included up here some names that vaping, the vape devices go by. One of which that's very popular now is the Juul. Um, we have e-cigarettes, pod mods, vape pens, tank systems, et cetera, et cetera. Um, vaping liquid can contain anything from nicotine to marijuana to other illicit drugs or just flavoring. Okay. So this is just a general vaping device. They all usually have the same three components. Um, first of all, they have the cartridge that contains the liquid. Then they have this atomizer, which is a chamber um, that contains the heating element and a chamber to hold the vapor. And then they all have a battery, okay? But vaping devices have actually evolved quite a bit since that first picture came out. So this is one of the latest devices that they've come out with. This is actually a Juul. Has anyone heard of Juul? Okay, so Juul is pretty popular. It's one of the biggest companies. Um, so it looks like a USB flash port. Okay, the charger does plug into a computer. These are the flavor pods, and then you have the battery and the mouthpiece. Slow down, okay. <laughs> um, okay. And then these are just some pictures of popular vape devices that are out there. I don't know about you guys, but can you see this picture here? This looks like a regular pen, but it's actually not. It's something that people are vaping with. And these look like cell phones, so they're, they're changing every day. Okay, so let's go back to the liquid. What is in the liquid? The liquid can contain nicotine, anywhere from zero milligrams all the way up to 36 milligrams, roughly. To put that into perspective, one cigarette has one milligram of nicotine in it. So some of these little tiny cartridges like this can contain one to two packs worth, uh, packs of cigarettes worth of nicotine in just that little tiny cartridge. Um, can any of you see what it says at the top of this box up here? What does it say? Well, besides bazooka. What does it say? Nicotine free. Yeah. Can you read the bottom? So it says warning. This product may contain nicotine. Yeah, so unfortunately these products are not well regulated, so somebody might think that they're vaping bazooka sour straws only, yet this product obviously contains nicotine as well, okay? Um, as I mentioned before, these liquids can contain marijuana, illicit drugs, Okay, and then they also contain some chemicals. We all like to breathe in chemicals, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> so propylene glycol and glycerol, those are used in these liquids um, basically so that they don't dry out in the cartridge, okay? It's a humectant, it keeps it moist. And remember those names because when we talk about risks of vaping, we're going to come back to those names, okay? 
flavorings are also in these liquids. So the last figure I saw, there were about 7,000 flavors on the market. Strawberry, mango, mint, I don't know. Chocolate, maybe, I'm not sure. Um, a lot of these flavorings are made with this chemical that's hard to pronounce, diacetyl, okay? Now, has anyone ever heard of popcorn lung? Yeah, yeah. do you know why it's called popcorn lung? So there was this factory where these factory workers were making microwave popcorn. And this popcorn was flavored. And as they were creating this, people were starting to get sick. And they ended up with a disease that we termed popcorn lung. Well, that popcorn lung actually came from the flavoring that was in the popcorn. So that flavoring is also in our vape devices now, all right? There's some other fun compounds in this liquid, heavy metals, tin, nickel, lead, uh, volatile compounds such as benzene. Um, I saw some benzene this morning as I started my car coming out my exhaust pipe, so that's in these liquids as well. Um, and then because these products aren't really regulated, they've also found like particles of stuff in the liquid itself. Just um, you know, metals and things like that. Okay, so this is the back of a jewel uh, pod cartridge box. And I put that up there just so that you could see um, that in about a quarter teaspoon, which is in one of those pods, it actually has the same amount of nicotine as a pack of cigarettes, okay, just in this strength. Um, one of these boxes, which has four flavor pods, plus a device, plus a charger, goes for about $64.99. I looked that up online a couple days ago. So relatively um, cheap to get into. Um, you can buy these supplies online, in retail stores, uh, and at vending machines. And you currently are supposed to be 18 years old or older to buy these. Although I did go on the Jewel website the other night, and all I had to do was click a button that said I was 18, and it let me go ahead with a purchase. So again, not very well regulated at this point. Um, I just want to stop. Do we have any Spanish speakers that want to hear the presentation in Spanish? ¿Hay alguien que quiere escuchar en español? No? Okay, so the interpreters are gonna exit right now. Okay, so who is vaping? Well, we know about 5% of adults are vaping. That's not very much. But teenagers really take the cake on this, okay? So as of 2017, high school students, about 12% of high school students were vaping. Well, that went up to 21% in 2018. And in California, as of December, it's actually at 37% of high schoolers are vaping. This is a huge problem, okay? Middle schoolers are currently at about 5%, so not as many, but still a rising concern. If you look at this graph, it's pretty light, um, but this shows the amount of kids that are vaping. So these are eighth graders, 10th graders, and 12th graders. And this first column is just overall vape use, okay? But then it breaks it down by substance. So the first one here is teenagers who are vaping nicotine, okay? That's probably about the highest. Second column is marijuana, and then the third one over is actually flavorings. But what do we know about flavorings? These guys over here they can contain nicotine too, so probably not just flavorings. Okay, so we know that smoking in teenagers is on the decline. This graph just shows the different age groups and how it's declined over time. Now let's look at a similar graph for vaping. So this is vaping over time. If you look at this right here in 2017, we see a sharp increase. And that is about the time that the Juul device came out, okay? 
So in 2017, they invented this really cool, discreet USB flash drive looking device. And that's when we see teenagers really took off with their vaping. Okay, so why is smoking down and vaping going up in teenagers? Well, for one, we know that smoking's bad for us, right? So I think a lot of people perceive vaping as a safer option. Um, also, vaping is very easy to hide. So when I was at the high school giving some lectures earlier this year, I learned that teenagers can just vape during class without even getting caught. So a lot of the students told me that they could put the device in their sweatshirt sleeve, they could put it down the front of their sweatshirt, and actually vape in the classroom without anybody noticing. Has anyone ever seen someone vape in the classroom? He has. All right. Yeah. Yeah. It's happening. <laughs> You're not the only one. Don't worry. <laughs> it's happening. So also, um, we think that vaping is on the rise because of the flavors. Um, you know, cigarettes stink. They smell bad. They taste bad. But vaping tastes like a rainbow, like mangoes and, and fun flavors. So that's really attractive to teenagers as well. And then we also have a lot of advertising going on. Um, so does anyone remember these ads? <laughs> they're, they're from quite a long time ago, the, the 1950s. But basically, um, you know, it says most doctors smoke camels. <laughs> and, and this was when we didn't know the dangers of cigarettes. Well, the ads for vaping nowadays look a lot like these ads and that they're portraying it as something that's very safe and fun. Um, I actually was kind of just looking for ads online and there's a billboard that uses Santa Claus as its, um, what do you call that? <laughs> its mascot basically for vaping. So these ads are really targeting children and teenagers and there aren't any restrictions on who they can advertise to as of yet. So about four in five middle school and high school students are exposed to advertisements, whether it be on their social media feed, on TV, in magazines, it's everywhere and it's showing it as a fun thing to do. Okay, so how did vaping come about? So back in 2003, it was developed in China, and then it came here in 2006. And initially, it was a bunch of little small companies that were developing a product um, that was geared towards helping people quit smoking. Well, little by little, these companies started being bought out by larger companies. And can anyone guess who those larger companies might be? Big tobacco. <laughs> so as of December 2018, the company that owns Marlboro Cigarettes bought the majority share in Juul. So I can guarantee you that these vaping companies do not have your best interest in mind. They know something that we don't know. And they're knowing that they're going to get a lot of customers from these vape products. Okay, so a lot of you are saying, well, isn't it safer than smoking? Why is it so bad? Well, we don't know the risks yet. Vaping has not been out long enough to know the full risks. We're just starting to see in the news some, you know, backlash of vaping, and I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, we do think, though, that in an adult, who is an established smoker, that vaping is probably safer. But again, we really don't have the evidence. And the FDA does not endorse vaping as a safe or effective option for quitting smoking. So what we actually see with adults is those who have gone to vaping as a way to quit smoking actually just never stop vaping. So they just continue to use that nicotine, whereas smokers who quit using other methods actually quit smoking and quit the nicotine habit. Um, 
Now this is a whole different story in teenagers. Vaping is very risky to teenagers. Why? Well, teenagers' brains are still developing, okay? And they will continue to do so until they're about 25 years old. So if a teenager starts vaping while their brain is developing, it can actually cause permanent brain changes, permanent brain changes that will cause them to be an addict into adulthood, okay? So when a teenager vapes, they take in a substance like nicotine, and that causes the brain to produce a chemical called dopamine, all right? Dopamine makes us feel really good, okay? Unfortunately, nicotine wears off really quickly. So once that really good feeling wears off, what is somebody gonna do again? They're gonna vape, right? So they can get that hit of dopamine again. So that's actually how addiction is established. And it really only takes a couple of days for a teenager to become addicted to these substances, okay? And I just wanna reiterate, these changes are permanent to the brain. So it's not even safe to experiment, okay? We also know that vaping is the gateway into cigarette smoking and using other substances, okay? So teens who vape are about four times more likely to go on to smoke, okay? We've looked at these teenagers, and the teenagers who are vaping and going on to smoking with their risk factors, they never actually would have picked up a cigarette if it hadn't have been for vaping, okay? So va vaping is getting them into something that's totally new that they never would have started if it hadn't have been for that vaping. That's pretty scary. Yeah. So I like to crunch numbers, and I wanted to know what the long-term effects of this were. So I just made some statistics for you here. So about three and a half million teenagers are vaping right now. Okay, one million of those teens will go on to smoke cigarettes. Three quarters of a million of those teens will then smoke cigarettes into adulthood. And then lastly, about a quarter of a million of those initial teenage vapors will die prematurely from smoking related death. So that's a huge deal. All right, back to the brain changes. So vaping actually changes the way that the neurons and synapses, all the connections form in the brain and can lead to other behavioral problems like attention control problems, depression, anxiety, uh, learning difficulties, difficulties in impulse control. So you can imagine a teenager who is damaging their brain in this way they may then be at even more risk for vaping because of the difficulties they're experiencing as vaping. So it's just a vicious cycle. And I like this down here. It's not like you can buy a new brain. <laughs> okay. So there are more health risks to vaping. Um, you can become exposed to carcinogens through vaping. We don't know specifically yet if vaping causes cancer. However, those chemicals that we talked about earlier, the propylene glycol, the glycerol, they do break down to become known carcinogens, one of which is formaldehyde. I know when I think of formaldehyde, I think of the frog hanging in the yellow jar substance. Is that something you wanna put into your lungs? Probably not. Um, they've also found, because these liquids are not well regulated, that they can be contaminated. They're not really made in a sterile process, so they've found that 80% contain molds and fungi, and 20% contain bacteria. Um, that's pretty gross. Um, these devices are also extremely flammable, so you can see the poor guy up here met with a bad fate uh, when he was vaping. It actually exploded in his face. We do see injuries from that. Um, I've also known people who have put these devices in their pockets 
and with that friction, it ignites their vape device, and then they have a huge burn on their leg as well, okay? Um, nicotine's effects on the body are listed in this picture here. It can cause high blood pressure, high heart rate. Um, and then as we're learning in the news these days, the vaping is causing some lung disease. So a recent survey showed that teenagers in California actually have more incidents of chronic bronchitis. That's not your acute two-week bronchitis one and done, this is actually chronic bronchitis that these 11th and 12th graders are getting. Um, it can also lead to something called eosinophilic pneumonia, which is basically almost your lungs having an allergic reaction to the substance, which then goes on to cause a pneumonia. So this slide I probably could have made about five times in the last week because the numbers and statistics are changing so fast. So this information is obsolete. <laughs> um, when I went back to look at it last night, the number of respiratory illnesses in the nation within the last year has gone up to 450 people, just from 200, you know, like last week. Um, the average age of these people is 19. So these are not older adults who have chronic conditions who are getting these respiratory illnesses. They're actually teenagers. And unfortunately, guys, it's men. Those are the higher risk categories. So 19-year-old men are getting um, these vape-related illnesses most commonly, okay? Um, some of these people are ending up in the ICU. A lot of them are on life support. And then the death toll has gone up to about six as of yesterday. Um, as far as I could tell, the people who had passed away from vaping-related illness were actually adults, but not all the statistics were available to me yet. Um, they have not found a causative agent for this vape-related illness. So they don't know if it's a chemical or um, an infection in the liquid that they're taking in. Um, they think about 80% of the cases have been caused by marijuana liquid, whereas 20% have been nicotine. One substance that they have found in common so far they think might be a cause is vitamin E oil. So people are vaping in basically oil, which then coats their lungs and do you think oxygen can get exchanged very easily through oil? No. <laughs> it's kind of like the equivalent of putting some saran wrap in your lungs, right? The oxygen just can't exchange. So they think that might be a causative factor for these illnesses. Um, the, the illness basically starts off very mildly with a cough, maybe some chest pain and a fever. And it can even have symptoms such as diarrhea or nausea, and then it just progresses from there and becomes severe illness. Okay, so vaping is not only dangerous to the person doing it, it's also dangerous to those around us. We all know about secondhand smoke. Well, secondhand vape also exists. This cloud here kind of shows what is in that secondhand vape cloud. That includes those carcinogens we talked about earlier, nicotine, benzene. And they actually took samples of blood from little kids whose parents vape, and they found nicotine in those children's blood. So we know that it can be transferred secondhand. And the scary thing about the vape cloud is even in a well-ventilated room, that stuff can stick to the surfaces in your car, in your room, and somebody can actually touch that and then get those carcinogens and nicotine into their system that way. And it stays on the surface for 100 days, which is amazing to me. Um, we're also seeing a lot of nicotine poisoning, okay? Calls to the poison control centers have gone up dramatically. Um, there was one call a month in 2010, up to about 200 calls a month, just related to vaping. 
And the majority of those calls were for children under three years old, unfortunately. Uh, and, and you can imagine why. Do you see this picture up here? So this is e-liquid, and that is apple juice. So a small child is not going to know the difference between those two products. Um, to put that into perspective, if a 50-pound child, which I'm thinking is probably like a 7-year-old or so, took in five drops of nicotine from one of those cartridges, that's actually a lethal dose of nicotine. So this stuff is not anything to leave laying around where the small kids can find it. Okay, also there are environmental risks with these uh, vaping pods. So you've heard about the bans on plastic bags, plastic straws. Well, now we have a whole new set of plastic in vaping pods. Um, so it just becomes you know, more of the litter in the environment. Um, currently, in all of the cleanups on the coast and urban areas, 40% of that waste is cigarette butts. And now I think we're going to be adding these e-pods into that waste. I was actually hiking in Alaska this summer on a glacier in the middle of nowhere, and I stepped on a jewel pod, which was pretty sad. So these things are getting into the environment, and they're leaking heavy metals and nicotine into our soils. Now, I thought a company such as Juul would actually have a recycling program for these pods. That would be the smart thing to do. But if you go on their website, they tell you, eh, just put it in the garbage. It'll be fine. So, all right. So current legislation in California, there are two Senate bills. Uh, unfortunately, Senate Bill 38 has already been pulled out as inactive. It's been put on the shelf for next year. Um, that would have prohibited the sale of flavored tobacco in retail shops and vending machines so that people couldn't get a hold of it that easily. But unfortunately, it's out. Senate Bill 39 is still on the table. They're still deciding on it as of August of this year. And this one's actually really good because it would make it so that the companies had to label their products very conspicuously as tobacco products. You couldn't have those look-alike products like I showed you earlier. Um, and it would also require the person purchasing the liquid to be 21 years or older. So if they bought it online, then the delivery person would actually have to see proof of ID that the person signing for it who bought it was 21 years or older. So I think that would help a lot um, cut down on the teenage vaping as well. And actually, um, in San Francisco, so at the city level, San Francisco as of July has banned the sale of e-cigarettes and vaping products completely. Okay, so something can be done at a local level. Um, okay. Oh, and also, so as of yesterday, <laughs> see the news is changing all the time. As of yesterday, the Trump administration actually said that they were going to try to get a ban on all um, flavored tobacco product sales, so the flavored vape sale. So they're working with the FDA on this right now. From what I could tell, it might take a couple of months to even roll out, but at least they're working on it. Um, the FDA has been involved since 2016 in regulation of these products. They did put the age limit to 18 um, on who, that they, who they could sell to. Um, they're also requiring warning labels and they're requiring that their products are registered with an ingredients list. When I went online to, to submit a product, you don't actually have to submit the liquid for any sort of testing. So from my standpoint, you could still just really put any ingredients you want on a product. And that being said, the FDA actually has kind of put a hold on this and allowed people to wait until 2020 till they actually have to follow these rules. They're also issuing a lot of warnings on the lookalike products as well. So this is another one. We've got Captain, no, Cinnamon Toast Crunch over here, e-liquid over there. Looks pretty similar. It's very misleading. 
So which teens are going to be more likely to vape? We kind of talked about this earlier. Um, and one of the number one things is that if they have a family member in the house who is vaping or smoking, they're going to be more likely to do the same. All right? Teenagers who are depressed or are, have mental illness in the family are more likely to vape. Um, if they're doing poorly in school or have poor attendance, they're more likely to vape. And then any teenager who's experienced an adverse event such as abuse, um, divorce, a battered parent, things like that, they're going to be more likely to vape. So this is the population that we need to get help so we can prevent them from go turning to vaping as a coping mechanism. All right, so what are the signs that somebody's vaping? So I mentioned the sweet scent before. Um, these things usually have a really fruity order, odor. It's not very long lasting. I was, when I was at the high school giving the vape talks, of course, I walked into the bathroom and the bathroom smelled like super powerful strawberry for about 10 seconds and then the odor went away. So it doesn't last for long, but if you're paying attention, you may notice a sweet, fruity scent. Also, those two chemicals, the propylene glycol and the glycerol, they're very drying to the skin and the mucous membranes. So you might see that your teenager all of a sudden is having bloody noses, bloodshot eyes, um, their acne might be really flaring up all of a sudden. They might be really thirsty, drinking water all the time. Um, so that might indicate that they're vaping as well. Um, oh, they also develop something called vape tongue. Has anyone heard of vape tongue? No? So it's the whole drying concept again. So the vaping, it sucks the moisture out of the tongue. The taste buds become inflamed. They don't work anymore. So your teenager who before might not have ever ordered the hot spicy salsa at the Mexican restaurant might be pouring the spicy salsa on their food now because they're craving flavor because they can't taste anymore. So that's something to watch for. And then if you have a teenager who likes to drink caffeine, you may see that use go down. Nicotine is very, um, it causes anxiety. Well, so does caffeine. So if they're vaping, then all of a sudden they might be very anxious from that and they're not drinking their daily dose of caffeine. Um, also, just kind of watch around the house for any of those unfamiliar USB devices, chargers, those pens that don't work, things like that. Those might be vaping devices. So how can you prevent somebody from vaping, your teenager from vaping. So you can start the conversation early. I know that because of this presentation, my six-year-old and nine-year-old have been asking me about vaping, and we're talking about it at home already. The American Academy of Pediatrics recommends talking to your kids as young as five years old about vaping. Um, and if you're a family member who smokes or vapes, you need to try to get help to quit as soon as possible. And if that's not possible, you need to put a ban on vaping and smoking when you're at home and when you're in the car because you don't want to set that example for your teenager. Um, you should teach your teenager to value their good health, okay? Vaping is really going to decrease your health. It's going to decrease your athletic performance. You're not going to be able to skate as fast or run as fast. And you want them to realize the effects that it can have on their health. Also, you need to teach them about the addiction. They can start having addiction within a couple of days of vaping. So even experimenting with this stuff is just not safe for them, OK? Um, Let's see, you also need to teach your teenager about the influence of their friends, what that will have on their decisions, as well as the media and the advertising. So even though the media is portraying vaping as being really fun and cool, you need to teach them that actually it's not. Okay, and then you do need to be rehearsing refusal skills at home. So role-playing with your teenager 
How do they get out of a situation um, if they're being offered a vape? How do they avoid this? And I like to use the acronym REAL, so get real. And that's refuse. Teach them how to say no if somebody's offering them the vape. Rehearse that with them. Teach them how to explain. So I don't want to vape because I want to run a six-minute mile. You know, give them excuses that they can use. Um, if they know that a friend is going to be vaping after school or a group of friends, encourage them to avoid that situation. Or if they're already in that situation, teach them how to leave that situation. OK. So I did list a bunch of resources. Unfortunately, I did not get a chance to print these out. So if you want to take a picture of this, feel free. These are resources for teenagers who might already be vaping. And, and if you really want it, I can email it to you as well. I do just want to point out that there are several free digital cessation programs. So actually, um, Teenagers can, if you enroll them in this, they can get texts and words of encouragement and tips on how to quit vaping via their cell phone. So it's really user friendly. Um, so I think that's the most important piece up there uh, because we know how much our teenagers like their smartphones. Um, and then these are some resources for parents. Again, I can send them to you if you would like. Um, it's just got some information on how to talk to your teens. The Surgeon General has info there. And then 1-800-NO-BUTS if you're looking to quit smoking. As well as Barton is going to be having a smoking cessation class starting September 26th. So um, they are going to be doing smoking and vaping cessation. Nancy, where's Nancy? Oh, right there. So Nancy's the health coach who's going to be teaching it. And she has flyers in the back if you're interested. So if you want to talk to her about it, you can. Um, this class is open to any age group, but unfortunately it's right in the middle of the day. So I don't think it's going to be very accessible to teenagers. I just want to kind of get an idea. Does anybody think that there's a need in the community for a teenage vaping cessation class? Um, yes. Yeah. OK. <laughs> OK. That's good, Nancy. <laughs> so yeah, if, if that's a need, we will definitely um, try to put something together that might be at a time that's a little more user friendly for teenagers. OK? All right. OK. So. Vaping is going to be on its way out at some point, hopefully, but what might be coming next? This device. <laughs> so this is something I found in my research. It's called the heat not burn cigarette. Like we need another device to be worried about, right? Um, so this just came to the US this year. And basically, it's this device with a tobacco stick in it that heats up to the point of producing a vapor but it doesn't actually burn the tobacco. So they're marketing it as safer in that sense, although it still releases the same carcinogens and all of that stuff that we talked about earlier. Um, this device is made by Marlboro. It's called the IQOS, I Quit Ordinary Smoking. So I think they're marketing it as a quitting smoking device. Um, it tends to run about $150 to $200, so I'm not sure it will be as accessible to teens. Plus, it doesn't come in any fancy flavors, so it may not be you know, as appealing to them either. But I just wanted to let you know what might be coming down the line um, in the future. All right. So thank you for listening, everybody. I just wanted to leave some time for questions, because I know there might be a lot of questions. Anybody? <laughs> yes? Is the vitamin E oil only in the THC products or is it in the nicotine products? So the question is, is the vitamin E oil in only THC or is it also in the nicotine? They found it in both products. It's not consistent throughout all the products, but there is a similar substance in a lot of the products because it maintains that moisture. 
Any other questions? Yes. So you mentioned the, um, the brain development slowing down with the e-cigarettes with the baby. What's the difference between that and regular cigarettes, like tobacco? So she's asking, is there a difference between vaping and cigarette smoking in teenagers, right, and the brain development? No. So any, um, any substance that's potentially addictive doing it as a teenager can create those same changes to the brain. Yeah. Other questions? In the back? Um, not specifically that I'm aware of, no. No vaping related illnesses yet that I'm aware of. Okay, any other questions? All right, oh, oh. Yeah, so one cigarette contains one milligram of nicotine, whereas the little cartridge, which is about a quarter teaspoon of liquid, can contain anywhere from 20 to 40 milligrams of nicotine. So one to two cigarette packs worth of nicotine in the little tiny vape cartridge. Yeah. Did you have another question? I don't think you can distinguish, um, you know, in the presentation of the illness itself. It's more about talking to the person about the history to know what might be causing it. Yeah. Any other questions? Yes. So the government is very active in preventing cigarettes with children, <coughs> advertising cigarettes and things like that. Mm -hmm. Obviously not the case with this vaping thing. Correct. Is there Involved. Get proactive with this rather than wait, you know, wait for it to take the 30 years that it took for smoking. Right, so he's acting or asking about um, any movements to ban the advertising. As of right now, nobody is working on banning the advertising, um, and it's a free for all to any age group at this point. I do think, though, with the Trump administration's announcement as of yesterday, um, and working with the FDA that they're really dedicated now in the next you know, couple of months, I think we'll start seeing bans on those uh, advertisements as well. As far as I know right now, there's no um, you know, movement or petitions in the town, although I'd love to see one start. San Francisco was able to ban the products in their city, so we could do the same thing. Um, the Senate bills are in Congress right now, so speaking to your senator would also be a good place to go um, in regards to banning the advertisements and things and getting them to actually vote on these bills because right now they're just sitting in um, Congress. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I actually spoke to all of the freshman classes. Um, it was at the end of their school year, but earlier, you know, earlier this year. Um, they've asked me to come again and speak to the classes again, as well as do a presentation in the high school for parents. And then um, the Cafecitos group at the middle school, so the Spanish-speaking parents group, has asked me to do a presentation as well, so I will be talking to the middle school parents as well. Yeah. Any other questions? All right. Well, thank you all for coming.